Okay, so we got done picking corn this evening. Dad, Strength, and I come back to the shop. And uh, Dad had the uh, 1660 in the shop, got the head cleaned up and cleaned out. So we're going to show you what happened to the auger trough in his head. Now, before we start picking corn, if you remember right from my uh, video before of when we first got the heads ready, there was a small hole here, and we'd patched it. Patched it from the bottom side. Well, at some point today... Well, Dad caught it right away when it happened, but either an ear corn got through another hole that developed or something and ripped it completely out. So you can see the size of the hole we have here to deal with. And you can see how thin these auger troughs get. I mean, they're not very thick to begin with when they're brand new. So and it's amazing how abrasive corn is and just a little bit of dirt and how it can wear these out. So from Polytech, Right here, Polytech, made in the USA, Monticello, Georgia. We got a auger trough kit, poly auger trough kit. This will go in, and this will actually lay in. This is the, the center piece where the feeder house is bolts all the way across in front of the feeder house. So they have awesome instructions that they come with. Uh, all the fasteners that you need come with them. Uh... Here's the fasteners, bolts, nuts, washers, and they even come with some wooden shims that you lay under them in spots. So, but what we have to do first is they don't want any larger than a, what was it, a three inch hole. Mm -hmm. So we need to bridge this hole some way so that we can support that poly plastic over this hole. Which we don't have to get too crazy, we just need to bridge it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bolt this flat steel underneath the old auger trough and that'll be enough to bridge that hole for that new poly to lay on. So uh, Dad already made this piece just out of the scrap we have laying around. So what we're gonna do is uh, we took a bolt out here and we, we're going to make another hole back here and bolt this in to bridge that gap. So, uh, and actually these bolts, I believe, I believe these bolts have to come out anyways because the poly will lay in there and they'll bolt all the way through the poly. So, uh, another thing you need to check is make sure your auger is straight. You cannot have this auger bent because when it flops, it'll hit the new poly and destroy the poly. So, uh, we're going to get what we need uh, bolt wise out and then we'll get started putting in the new poly piece or pieces and we got another small hole here that developed actually dad cut the pieces off just to get rid of them but this wasn't this was just a small hole here um, this one's okay that's plenty small you can bridge right over it so we're going to get started on this now Okay, so we're gonna get started here. Uh, first thing we need to do is put the centerpiece in. So in order to do that, we're actually gonna have to take the head off the combine so that we can get to the five bolts here. And we also have to drill two additional bolts and install uh, a quarter by 20 by inch and a quarter elevator bolts in those holes. Um, that way it holds it down flat all the way across where the feeder house chain runs so you can see that here in the on the instructions so uh we'll get this head off the combine set on the floor get the combine backed up so we can get in there and do that Now that we got the combine off the head and backed up out of the way, we've got to remove all these bolts, which they send us all new elevator bolts that go back in their place. So you can just take a grinder and cut them right off and get rid of them. Uh, because if not, you got to try to 
get up under here with a wrench and get them off and sometimes they just spin. So we're going to grab a grinder, cut all them off real quick and then we'll get this piece put in. Okay, so I got all the bolts removed. So now Dad and I are going to start putting the center section in. I got it rolled under the auger so far now and it's getting caught on the bolt heads. So Dad's going to take a screwdriver and just pop it up over the bolt heads as I push. There we go. Won't go. There. So it says in the instructions, you can also raise the auger up and out of the way. All the way up. Oh, now it's stuck here. There we go. There we go. Now it's stuck over here. But we're going to do it without raising the auger up. And then you push it back until it gets under this lip right here. So I'm going to have both hands to do that. Okay, so first section's in. What I ended up doing is taking a short piece of 2x4 and a hammer and just hitting the edge of that poly until I drove it down far enough that it dropped right in. And as you can see, it's a nice transition from there to the poly. So it's like that all the way across. And that's what we want. So now we can get this section bolted in. I came to the back of the head and I'm going to start installing the uh, elevator bolts that they sent with it to bolt all this back in. I had to drill a hole here and I had to drill a hole here with the supplied drill bit that came with the kit. So now we're going to put these bolts in, we're going to tighten them up and it's very important to back them off three quarters of a turn to uh, make up for hot and cold expansion and contraction with the poly kit. So I got all the elevator bolts bolted in, the feeder house uh, area of the kit, I guess you could call it. So you're going to want a 7 16 gear wrench to do this with because it's about the only thing that'll fit up in there. I tried the Milwaukee cordless ratchet and it didn't quite work out so well. Uh, you can't put a deep well socket on it and it'll, it just won't fit up in there. With a shallow well, the bolts are too long and you can't, can't finish tightening the nut up. So best way to do it is just 7 16 gear wrench, lay on the floor and reach up in there. So uh, now that we got that in, we're going to go work on putting the rest of the kit in. Okay, so now we put the head back on the combine and picked it up because the rest of the kit you need to get under the head to finish putting the bolts in and there's no real good way of reaching under the head while it's sitting on the floor. So since I got the ones in the center done, just went ahead and put it back on. Make sure you drop your safety. Put your safety down if you're going to be crawling around under the head. Uh, just, just don't take any chances. So... Uh, Dad's going to get in the head now and poke me the bolts down through where they go and I'm going to go underneath and I'm going to tighten them while he holds them in the top. So there's what, a bolt in every row, Dad? Yes. Yeah, there's a bolt dead center every row. We will actually have to, we got to drill up through the bottom and uh, once we drill up through the bottom then he can drop the bolts through. Uh, that side where he started on, we saved this side to do all on video. So uh, we're going to get started on this side. Now we're putting the end piece in. Uh, Dad's going to put it in. We've got it shoved on under the auger already. So I'm just going to just simply take block wood and just... Just keep working it in until it falls in and snaps behind there. Hit it right here. Right there. It's still high. There we go. Yep. Nice smooth transition now. So now I'm going to go underneath and I'm going to drill from the bottom up and uh, we'll get our bolts put in. But we got to wedge shims under the flighting of the auger to hold down tight on the poly while I drill up through so it doesn't push up. That auger got tight, didn't it? 
Might have to adjust that auger up too. Yeah. So, okay. So basically, you snap the outside pieces in the same way we snap the center piece in. So, these kits are actually pretty easy. Just a few steps to do. So now I got to come under here and I'll actually take a drill and I got to measure over from this last bolt. This is from the center section. I got to measure over six inches, make a hole. And then I got to come from this wall over four inches and drill another hole. And then I'll have to drill one somewhere in here. I got to measure it out. But, uh, and that'll hold the floor all down and secure to the original steel auger trough. Okay, one other thing before we drill our holes is you have to shim these with an expansion joint. This piece of uh, poly they send, you got to put that between the two liner pieces and that spaces them out enough for expansion and contraction for hot and cold. So, and Dad also got the uh, shims wedged under the flighting now to hold the poly down tight in the original auger trough. So now I can go underneath and I can drill those holes and we can uh, get the bolts put in. Okay, so we have this side all bolted. What I done was uh, my four inches from here, six inches from there, and then I split the difference. It ended up being about 24 inches. Uh, and I also drilled a uh, drain hole here to let water out if it collects in there. So uh, then we went back through and we drilled basically directly behind the uh, check plugs for the gearboxes. Dad drilled down through from the top side and we bolted it here, here, and then behind the other gearbox there. So this whole half of the head is completely done. Uh, to drill the holes, what really helps is to have a drill like this, an L head drill, 90 degree drill. Um, it barely fit in there between here and there to drill, but it worked. I got it done. And then dad used it uh, for between the auger and the back sides of the gearboxes to get that drilled from the top side down. So it, it fit in there real nice to do that. So that's what we used. So we'll go up on top and have a look also. So here's what it looks like from the top. And I guess the screws ended up more directly in the center of the row than they did behind the drain plug after being up here. So, uh, but I mean, no big deal. So we got our, our uh, pan, head, pan head bolt here, or screw, and we got our elevator bolt right there. One here, one here, one there, and there. And you can see it holds everything nice and tight. There's no, uh, nothing for anything to get caught on right here. So, turned out real nice. Uh, we're going to finish the rest of it in the morning because it's already like 9.30 at night and we're tired. So, we're just going to finish the rest in the morning. I mean, because there will probably be frost or dew or something. So, it'll be a little wet in the morning. So, we'll get it finished. But, anyways, if you like this episode of Dirt Rain Steel, give me a like and subscribe. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll see you guys on the next one.